When asked for story ideas, a bunch of you suggested many lathe and many lathe related projects. So we'll start with the review of this Excelsior mini lathe from Rockler. It's made out of a bunch of cast iron and it's got a half horse induction motor. This may be a mini lathe, but it weighs 80 some pounds, so our next project is going to be building a cart for it so I don't have to keep carrying it around. And some of that weight comes from this cast iron headstock. The headstock is fixed in position and that's just fine on a mini lathe. They include a knockout rod and this four wing drive spur that fits into the number two Morris taper in the spindle. And they include a tough three inch drive plate you can use for bowl or platter type projects. The spindle has a very popular one inch by eight threading. And the spindle runs in double ball bearings so it runs true through the whole speed range. And a nice touch is this chrome hand wheel on the other end of the spindle. Speed changes are made by changing the belt position on these step pulleys. And there's something about this lathe that I think makes that process easier. All of the mini lathes I tried before had spring loaded metal doors and they kept popping back up while you're trying to change the belts. This lathe has plastic doors that come off all together and stay out of the way and I like that. We have to relieve the belt tension. We do that by releasing the locking lever, lifting up on the motor, and locking it in place there. It's all tool free and all right up front. I've already moved the belt one step on the lower pulley. Now I'll push it over to the next step on the upper pulley so they're matching in positions. And that's all there is to it. Then I go back around the front and apply tension to the belt. Put the covers back on and we're ready to start turning. One of the things I always check on a lathe before I get too far into it is how closely the centers align. If there's much of a misalignment here, you'll never get this lathe to run right. But we have no worries with the Rockler lathe. These centers line up perfectly. This lathe comes with a 6 inch long tool rest that fits into a cast iron banjo. The handle that locks the tool rest post in place is repositionable. That lets you put it where it's fully out of your way when turning and that makes it a little safer. The tailstock is built around one very solid iron casting. The tailstock itself is locked in place with a single lever on the back side. Another repositionable handle is used for locking the tailstock quill in place. The hand wheel on the rear of the tailstock has a spinner handle that makes it easy to move the quill through its 2 inch long travel. A ball bearing live center is supplied with the lathe and that fits into the number 2 Morris taper in the tailstock quill. And this quill is self extracting in that when you back it up fully it automatically pushes what's ever in the Morris taper free. And now with everything checked it's time to put some wood in this machine and see how it turns. This is about 15 inches of hardwood that I cut out of a pallet. I'm going to use this in an upcoming video tutor, but I needed to round it out, so this is a good test piece for us to try here. I purposely set this at the second highest speed to see if I can get any vibration out of the machine, but there's nothing that I can feel at all. And keep in mind that this lathe is just sitting on the rubber feet it came with. It's not bolted down to the cabinet it's sitting on. And I haven't added a bunch of weight or nothing. We just put the wood in it and started turning and it's running nice and smooth. After rounding the piece out, I'm just going to cut a little shape in the end just to see if there's any control problems or vibration that show up. I'm using a 3 8 spindle gouge and this is a good tool for revealing vibrations if you're starting to get them in the wood. But neither me nor the tool are feeling anything. Everything's cutting nice and smooth. So we've cut a little v-shaped bead in the end of our short spindle piece. But I made this lathe cart longer for a reason. So it's time to put on the extension bed and see how it turns with that installed. First I had to remove the two hex head cap screws on the end of the lathe bed and remove this plastic cover. And that reveals the surface to which the extension will mount using the same cap screws that we just took out. Before installing the extension, we have to screw in the rubber feet that came with it. And there's nothing fancy here. We just screw them in and run them down snug against the boss. Then I can roll the extension over, set it in position, and start putting the bolts into it. You have to reach underneath to get the bolts in place, but there's a lot of room there and it's pretty easy. With both bolts installed and snugged down, we need to align the ways. And we want to take a lot of care in getting this right. We need the middle edges perfectly aligned and the ways have to be perfectly flush with each other. 
This is liable to take a little wrapping back and forth with a dead blow mallet, but it take your time and get it right. The ground surfaces of the ways have to be perfectly flush with each other as well to make sure that the tail stock will slide through this joint easily. To make sure that our centers line up, we need to put a good straight edge down the ways across both pieces of the bed and make sure that everything's level with each other. And I found here that I had a tiny gap beneath the straight edge right at the joint. I noticed that the feet at the end of the original lathe, sort of in the center now, were actually suspended a little bit. So I turned both middle feet down to make sure that they were both carrying weight and that gap underneath the middle of the straight edge went away. With the bed extension installed and checked out, I mounted up this 38 inch long piece I had from another lathe test years ago and since then this piece warped a little bit. But that's alright, we need to see how the lathe works with a piece that's out of balance because not much is going to be in balance when we first mount it up. Now here again, I'm spinning this piece pretty fast because I want to see how much of a vibration a lathe will pick up. I can feel the intermittent contact in the tool itself, but there is no vibration in the lathe. And as I get the section rounded, the tool feels nice and smooth. You can't feel any vibration in the lathe. In here I'm rounding off the last little bit of it. You can see that this piece was quite a bit out around, but it's coming right back in and everything's nice and smooth. And now with the piece generally rounded, we'll go to the 3 8 spindle gouge again. This piece is still turning about 2200 RPM, so I wanted to see if the spindle gouge would pick up any vibrations. But even when I lean on it a little bit and take a deeper cut than I should, it cuts right through and everything stays nice and smooth. The wood isn't vibrating, so the tool stays nice and smooth on the surface. If you're just learning to turn, that kind of smoothness can be important to learning how to handle the tools. You'll find that you can start your own catches just fine. You don't need the workpiece to start vibrating or the tools start chattering, both of which can start a catch real quick. So if you've been thinking about a mini lathe, you need to check out this one from Rockler. This lathe is well made, it has all the features that you need, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. The fact that it comes from Rockler, a supplier many of us have trusted for years, doesn't hurt anything either. You need to stop and think about what you really want to do in wood turning, and how much room you have available to do it in. And we all have to be realistic about the budget we're willing to commit to turning. And I think there's going to be a lot of you to come to the conclusion that this mini lathe from Rockler is just what you need. 